first of all i hope you guys all have a great new year's eve i hope 2021 is gonna be a better year than 2020 anyways over here we have a familiar engine it has had multiple showcases on my channel you know it did fairly well in terms of fuels you know i think people like it so anyways <laughs> i did something you know i did a really stupid thing not a lot of people would do it but i did it you know you guys remember this engine and how expensive this is and all and that it's like basically you know the best of the best in terms of racing well you know i took this engine and uh we got it modified. So you're looking at a rare OS engine. This is not something that a lot of people do, but I went out and I did it. I got this OS speed modified. So I'm actually gonna take this apart. I'm going to show you guys the internals. Also, something I really like about the cooling head is that it's actually a low profile head. As you guys can see, it actually has space underneath. So it sits lower on the block. So I always like these low profile heads. Oh, <laughs> just look at that. It just picked up the whole entire firing chamber with it. <laughs> look at that. So what I always do when I take apart an engine is I always make sure to clean all the parts separately. That way I know that none of the dirt will fall in the engine uh, during reassembly or disassembly so as you guys can see right here this engine never ran lean this is just rich in the last two videos you guys saw how rich it ran so i did not expect anything but to see this so now we got that out of the way now it's time to put the piston in top that center and we're gonna take apart the back plate nice nice got a light, nice little ledge right there so this is what i always use to remove the, the piston i put the zip tie in like that and then I get either a flywheel or just a bolt like this. Put that on the crank, then get your wrench out and be sure to tighten it. And then it will most likely pop up any second. There you go. There you go, you see that? Pulls it right out. So now you have that right there. You remove the zip tie. And then you can use like something like a little screwdriver there on the bottom. And then it, there it comes. So that's the sleeve. This connector rod is nice and fresh because there's a lot of resistance. Oh man, that's good. That means those bushings will last me a long time. It doesn't want to slide off on its own. That's a good sign. That means the bushings are nice and fresh. There you go. That's the piston. And last and not least, the crank. So now we completely disassembled the engine. All right, people. So we got the engine disassembled. I got the head, the everything else. And as you guys can see, I think I'm gonna start off with the block because that's really interesting as well. Because as you guys look inside the block, it just looks perfect, man. As you guys can see that right there, that's a ceramic rear bearing. It feels and see and also looks in like new basically. So that's definitely gonna last me another couple of gallons. And then if we go to the front, do we have the front bearing, which also still feels great. Let's see if it spins freely. Perfect. No sound, nothing. I replaced some of the needles though, because the needles, uh, I believe the high speed needle was worn. The, the O-ring was worn. So I did replace that. And you know, after that it just worked. So you guys have seen it all perform in all its stock glory, but now it's actually modified. So let's see what my engine builder did to it. Up next is the piston and cylinder. And as you guys can see right here, this is where Rulof did a lot of his work. These things, these are all custom made by Rulof and they look sick this will definitely help upcoming next is the crank this crank has been dlc coded from the factory and that makes it really easy for me to see where Rulof did his work because as you guys can see right here that's basically where they used to be dlc coded because Rulof went and removed some of the material to modify the crank you know you can see that he has removed material here and here for better engine timing probably to increase power because this engine did not have a lot of power it only had a lot of top end so hopefully this will have a little bit more bottom end current so i can actually use this in a truggy oh oh as you guys can see right here <laughs> hey man he did a lot of work to this man that's definitely looking great right there 
that looks sick. Over here we have the counterbalance weight that they always have on other OS engines. And I mean the rest of the crank still looks pretty good. Looks nice and covered in DLC coating. I don't see any scratches on it. So this will definitely last me another season. The backplate is still the same OS backplate. Unfortunately he did not change anything about this. I would have loved to see a custom, you know, air boost backplate that he also made on my Pico Boost, but you know, I cannot complain because again, you know, these, this OS backplate is also really nice. And as he said himself, the air boost backplate does not make a lot of difference. And that's it basically. So this is my modified OS engine. And I'm really curious to see how this will perform compared to uh, when it was stock. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned. I don't know when I'm gonna run this engine, but I am probably gonna run this engine in my Truggy because I wanna see what, what this thing will do with a 9886 and a 41 or 32. I wanna see how much power I can get out of this 21. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.